gotta, gotta have heart. What a fucking game. The New York Knicks. Oh, man. I guess. The New York Knickerbockers, your second seeded New York Knickerbockers, where for a second there in the first quarter, it looked like maybe the second seeded New York Knickerbockers shouldn't have wanted any part of being the second seeded New York Knickerbockers. Just, I'm not going to say escaped game one because they didn't escape. Although there was some escape like qualities to that victory. Took game one from the clutches of the Philadelphia 76ers, 111 to 104 in a game they absolutely needed to win. And I know if they had lost this game, I would have found a way to come on here and rationalize it, <clears throat> say all hope is not lost. And I would have been lying through my goddamn teeth because you retook momentum in a game where you absolutely had none of it, captured it, were kind of in control, and then absolutely frittered it away in a third quarter that we will discuss because it was quite unpleasant. And I, I there was a, so much from this game that is going to set the tone for the rest of the series. But to have Embiid go out for those couple of minutes and then to have Embiid come back, and then we're going to talk about how he looked when he come back. When he came back, I, I was not the same guy as he was in the first quarter, but he was pretty damn good. Um, but just to be that close in your own building, I didn't think they could lose the game. I, once they got to a certain point, I did not think that they could lose this game and win this series. And yes, I realize I am saying that about a game in which Jalen Brunson took 26 shots and made eight. Give him credit. 22 points, found a way to get 22 points, 22 points, seven assists, seven rebounds, like found ways to help his team. You will not see Jalen Brunson have a worse offensive basketball game than he just had. Maybe I maybe that's a step too far. You won't see Jalen Brunson have a worse shooting game than he just had. Um, and again, we're going to talk about all of this stuff as the night goes on and and full coverage between now and game two. And, and as the series goes on, I thought the Sixers did some really nice things against Jalen Brunson. I thought Jalen Brunson also just missed a lot of shots that he normally makes. And Maybe they got in his head a little bit by the end of this game because he was he was getting to his spots and they just weren't going down. That being said, when they absolutely needed a bucket from him um, late there uh, to make it 98, 92, he came through. But this game, uh, despite the fact that I wore my my JB shirt today, this game is not about Jalen Brunson. Well, actually, you know what? I, I stand corrected. This game is about Jalen Brunson. It's all about Jalen Brunson. And here's why. You could win regular season games when your best player is not at his best. It's possible. We've seen it. We saw the Knicks win a, a game this season when Jalen Brunson went out after 47 seconds and they found a way. Playoff basketball is something different. And in particular, playoff basketball is something different when you are facing um, one guy who was on track to win MVP and came out looking like the MVP. And even after he got hurt, had quite a few plays there in this game where he looked like the presumptive MVP. And then his sidekick, and yes, I'm I, that's big air quotes because Tyrese Maxey didn't look anything like a sidekick tonight. I know it took him 26 shots to get his 33 points, but he was having his way with this Knicks defense, specifically when Embiid was in the game. That's the key. It's when those two are on the court at the same time that it activates Maxi and it makes Joel Embiid basically unguardable. Something happened to Joel Embiid in the fourth quarter of this game, and it was an injury, and I don't, I don't think it was fatigue. It was Mitchell Robinson, and we're going to talk about him. We're going to talk about all of these guys because the reason this was a Jalen Brunson game is because you are not supposed to win a game if you are the New York Knicks. I don't care 
how loud the building is. I don't care how much energy was in Madison Square Garden before the start of this game and throughout many parts of this game. You are not supposed to win a game where Jalen Brunson shoots like that and the two best players on the other team play like that. And yet they did. And how did they do that? Because every other player on the court, forget chipped in, forget chipped in, played like this was game seven of the NBA finals and came up massive. Josh Hart will be the story of this game. As he should be. There is no player like Josh Hart in the NBA. Um, he is one of one. And I don't just say that because he is six foot four and he grabs rebounds that he has absolutely no business getting ever in a million years. Um, he is one of one because nobody approaches the game quite like him where he says, you know what? Not the most athletic guy in the world. I'm not the most skilled guy in the world, but I will outwork you. It doesn't matter if you are my height, if you are six inches taller than me, if you're the size of Joel Embiid, I will outwork you and I will outwork you in minute one and I will outwork you in minute 24 and I will outwork you in minute 48. It doesn't matter. If in minute 48, I have played 42 of the previous 47 minutes or 41 of the previous 47 because he finished with 42, including, by the way, the entire second half of this game. Josh Hart's one one And the fact that he had as many three-pointers in the fourth quarter of this game as he had in any other game this season shows you what he's made of. And it shows you why he is the heart and soul of this team. And it shows you why this team wouldn't be this team without him for as much shit as he catches from a lot of people. Um, And he does catch a lot of shit from a lot of people. But it wasn't just Josh Hart. And anybody who watched this game knows damn well it wasn't just Josh Hart. I'm not sure where I want to go to next because for as much as this is, it's going to go down to the Josh Hart game. There are two players who I think every Nick fan will come away from this game. Because Josh Hart is in, in three threes in the fourth quarter are not a given, but Josh Hart's kind of a given. But the two guys who made the difference in this game, arguably a bigger difference than Josh Hart, are two players who we had every reason to have questions about coming into this postseason for vastly different reasons. One of them was Mitchell Robinson. And Mitchell Robinson, as I'm happy they said it on the broadcast, I think it was Breen that said it. Maybe it was one of uh, one of Doris or JJ. Somebody definitely pointed out he was on. I think it was Breen. He was on his way to having an all defense season uh, to making an all defense team when he got hurt. And since he came back, he's had flashes. He's had flashes, but flashes aren't going to cut it against Joel Embiid looking like Joel Embiid came out looking tonight. And (laughs) boy, Shows what shows what uh, Smarty Pants me knows because all I could think of coming into the series was oh my god, how many how many minutes could we get out of Isaiah Hardenstein? Can we push Isaiah Hardenstein to like thirty two minutes? You know, and is there is there going to be a role maybe for Pesher Sachua? Like if Mitch just isn't if he's not cutting it and he looks like he's looked for the majority of the time since he came back from this injury a few weeks ago, maybe, I don't know, maybe precious was switching and maybe a little bit more playmaking. Maybe he gives us a better option. Yeah. Keep listening to what I say, really hitting the, hitting the bullseye on that one because Isaiah Hardenstein, 18 minutes in this game, precious to Chua, obviously zero minutes in this game and Mitchell Robinson in the most minutes he has played since he came back from injury, 30, Absolutely massive, massive, massive minutes. The stat line may not really do it justice. Seven offensive rebounds, pretty good, right? Pretty good. We've seen him have games with more. Four blocks, eight points, two big free throws. Um, His defense on Joel Embiid in the fourth quarter of this game was the stuff that legends are made of. And I know it's only game one, and I guarantee you, I guarantee guarantee you Joel Embiid is going to get his before this series is over and probably more than once because that dude is a freaking beast. I know everybody hates him right now because he pushed jo- jo- uh, Jalen Brunson into the backcourt. What we saw from Joel Embiid tonight, that's a warrior. And that's a guy that any fan base would be crazy not to 
uh, praise and one on their team. I know he didn't make, you know, some of those shots in the fourth quarter. The dude, the for him to come back out there and do what he did was like, what else can you possibly want? And Mitchell Robinson went toe to toe with him, to, as much as anyone can. Mitchell Robinson went toe to toe. And between that and the offensive rebounding and the putbacks and the second opportunities, I, I lost track of how many times I wrote down Mitchell Robinson's name um, as I was uh, going through, as I was taking notes during this fourth quarter. Um, multiple massive offensive rebounds, a putback, blocked a Paul Reed three. Paul Reed, you think you might, might want to keep your fucking mouth shut? Maybe? Think you maybe learned your lesson after this game? Did nothing. Mitchell Robinson swatted him out of bounds. And then what I thought, maybe m- my favorite play of the game, non, non-Josh non Hart three-pointer division. <clears throat> Mitchell Robinson battling for that jump ball or j- battling for that rebound. And I know Embiid ended up winning it. And, and you know, it, it was that, that was a funny tip situation, but it didn't matter. That's... That's laying everything out there. And I said before the series, and I'll say again, win or lose against Philadelphia, I, I would find it hard to to be up to be too upset. I mean, I mean, I'd be upset, but like to be down on this team, to be angry with this team, or upset or annoyed with this team if they just did it like they've been doing it all season. And tonight, they somehow took what they did all season and they exceeded it. Um with the exception of Jalen Brunson, who had one of the worst nights you'll ever going to see him him have. Um, so that's Mitch. And then the other guy, boy, I, I kind of, there's a part of me that wants to pull up my, my newsletter <clears throat> that I wrote on Friday. Um, when I, uh, I forget what exactly I said, but it was something to the effect of, boy, do soup ride. He has one more field goal in the uh, in the in the in his playoff career than than me and you do. Are we sure we could, we could trust Deuce Pride to come, to like have the courage to take the threes that the Sixers are going to give him? Let alone make the threes that the Sixers are going to give him. Like, is he going to get gun shy? Is he going to be able to like you know if he has an opportunity to run the offense? Is he going to be able to you know competently like? Direct things if if the ball isn't in Jalen Brunson's hand. Again, talk about hitting bullseyes. Do soup ride. This is a this this is I, I'm sorry. I've never seen this number, this sort of this disparity before in my life. Do soup ride played 28 minutes in this game. He was played 28 minutes in this game in a game they won by seven points. They didn't win by 17. They didn't win by 27. They won by seven points. And in Deuce Pride's 28 minutes, he was a plus 37. And there is nothing about that number that is a misnomer in the slightest. Because for as much as Deuce Pride's 21 points and his 7 of 12 from the field, and his five of seven from deep, including hitting his first four. And oh my lord, the momentum of those threes, one after another, after another, after another. Like, because the Knicks, like, they were, look, they were never dead in the water, to be very clear. Like, they were, like, these Knicks are never out of it. You know, they're going to come back. But the reason they come back in these games is because of someone stepping up. And often it is a person stepping up and it is in, in that person inspiring the collective of individuals around them. And for as much as Joel Embiid coming back on the court in the third quarter inspired his teammates, I thought Deuce Pride's uh, play went, from the moment he checked into the game in the first half inspired his teammates. Um, he came in and was part of a lineup. Mitchell Robinson, Boyan Bogdanovich, um, OG Ananobi, and Jalen Brunson That lineup had played zero minutes together. Zero. Zip. Nada. Before this game. And Tibbs ran with it. Because why wouldn't you? Um, And they they caught a flow. And um, it was just... It was was the difference in the game. That second quarter was the difference in the game. Because if they don't go up there in the second quarter and 
like Philly comes out and does what they did in the third quarter. I, I don't know if the Knicks have, I don't, I don't, I just, I don't think they have enough to, to push it back. So, and then of course, Deuce hit a, a massive three uh, to make it 91 86. Um, let's, let's not forget that. Um, so yeah, Mitch and Deuce, but they weren't the only heroes, obviously. And, and j- just like Josh Hart wasn't the only hero. Um, OJ Ananobi, obviously the, the biggest, moment for him was the made three that I, the, the hard three was really sealed it. Cause after the, the, uh, after the OG three, Lowry hit a three to, to bring it back within four, like Philly could have won the game still at that point without any kind of craziness happening. Even so that OG three, um, not a corner three and above the break three. Um, but, but that buries what I think was a, by the way, by the way, the streak is over. I know it's a regular season streak, but OJ and Obi was a negative in this game. It's the first time he's been a negative in a game as a Nick, and they still won, so that's a good sign. Um, you know, he had one steal, he had he had no blocks. I thought OG defensively, I, I, I thought he was he was every bit the impact player, even though he didn't there was an, the splash plays, and even though there, you know, maybe not a lot of highlights, he was absolutely impacting what Philadelphia did and was able to do. <clears throat> and I thought um, just a really, really solid game from OG Ananobi. And the only other guy that I want to mention, and you know where I'm going to finish this off with, is Boyan Bogdanovich. And again, you need all of these guys if you're going to overcome a JB game like that and an Embiid and a, and a Maxi game like that. Boyan Bogdanovich, talk about saving his best for when it counts. Second to Deuce, plus 27 in 25 minutes. He was only 4-12 from the field, but anybody watching this game knows um, the impact of his makes were massive. Finished with 13 points. How about seven big rebounds from Boyan Bogdanovich? Again, you don't do what you did tonight if you're the Knicks without contributions from everyone. You don't out-rebound the Philadelphia 76ers. Again, it's like we're looking at some fake numbers here. It's like the Brunson shooting line was a fake number. The Deuce plus minus line was a fake number. Here's another one that looks like a fake number. On a team with Joel Embiid on it and a team that runs out oftentimes lineups where like four players at once are over six foot seven or six foot seven or higher, this Philadelphia 76ers got out rebounded 55 to 31. That is some Thibodeau shit right there. And yes, part of it is this is a team full of Thibodeau players, but that's some Tom Thibodeau shit right there. A descendant of Jeff Van Gundy, a descendant of Pat Riley, no rebounds, no rings. 55 to 33, including my Lord, 23 to 9 on the offensive glass. You want to tell me that this next team isn't just like built to outwork their opponent. They were not the better team tonight. Like in terms of the things that often decide playoff games, like how good are the best players playing? Like who's making more shots? The Knicks won this game despite shooting 39.6% from the field. 44.4% from for Philadelphia. And I know the Knicks made up for it with a lot of big threes. They shot 45.7% from three. But you know what? Credit to them for taking them and credit to them for making them. But they got nothing done inside the arc. The free throw this, uh, at the end of the day, 28 for the Knicks, 22 for Philly. I thought I didn't have any problem with the whistle. I know fans were booing Joel at the end there. Like he, he's been getting those calls his whole life. He's going to get those calls all series long. I, I, I don't I don't mind them. Um, this was a want it game. This was a want it more game. It's what it is. One team wanted it more than the other team. And that's no shade against the Philadelphia 76ers who I thought came in. And I mean, when you want to talk about took it to the Knicks in the first quarter there, absolutely took it to the Knicks. And I think the Knicks, you know, I want to save some of the, some of the actual nitty gritty stuff for as we go through the, the live stream. But I thought again, it's it's all about the head of the snake, right? So if you can make Jalen Brunson uncomfortable, and again, we could talk about like how good were his quality of shots? Were they were they acceptable? Were they mediocre? Were they subpar? Um, what the Knicks were doing to get him looks, I thought was as good of as anything as they could do to get him looks. Um, 
but there's no question that Philadelphia made him uncomfortable. And I think when you make Jalen Brunson uncomfortable, which they did, and they succeeded at doing honestly almost all the way through the game, I th- it just throws everything else off. And I thought when you saw the Knicks come out there in the first quarter and they went down by whatever they went down by, I think 10 or 12 points at one point, <clears throat> it was just because they were kind of all out of sorts. And the other reason they were kind of all out of sorts is, is Joel Embiid. And you saw that manifest itself throughout the entire game where even though Embiid on a couple of possessions either couldn't grab a defensive rebound or couldn't contest, uh, you know, Mitchell Robinson pull one down and, and get it back up. He was absolutely remained uh, an intimidating force in, in the Knicks heads when Knicks, any Nick almost uh, except Mitch got anywhere close to the rim. So like the Sixers did some real good stuff uh, before game one. I thought Embiid's health was, I mean, far and away goes without saying the most important factor in the series after game one. I still think Embiid's health is going to be far and away the most important factor in the series because the guy that we saw in the first quarter, man, can't stop that dude. And you can't stop a team that he's on because when you put him on the floor with Maxi, it's basically like, all right, pray three point shooters miss. And let's try to really make hay in the minutes he's off the court. And even then, it's it's just so tough. Like, there's a reason their net rating was what it was with him. There's a reason the record was what it was with him. There's a reason the net rating with the two of those guys on the floor at the same time. Like, this series is not over. I should go with that saying. This series is not over. Had to have game one. Had to have game one. Series is not over. It's a long way from over. They will fight. I... I mean, we'll see how Embiid's knee holds up. <clears throat> um, I'm just looking at a quote from Tibbs. This is uh, courtesy SNY. Uh, oh, actually, no. Sorry, this is from Nick Nurse. Give them credit. We're probably okay with some of those shots, but they hit them. Um, yeah, I mean, Nick Nurse tonight, like, how do you go to sleep if you're Nick Nurse? Like, you, you, you coached a great game. Your defensive game plan worked. For all, I mean, it should have worked. You got that you you got Josh Hart taken three after three after three after three, and Josh Hart decided to have the best shooting night of uh, of his season. He saved it for when it mattered the most. What do you finish with? Four of eight, four of eight from downtown. My goodness, and Deuce five of seven. So yeah, I mean, Nick Nurse, you got to live with it because like, what else are you going to do? You did what you could do, and you lost. Um. Thankfully, we don't have to live in that reality right now. Whew, man. What a fucking game. What a win. So massive. I don't know what this team's going to do from here. I don't know how they're going to even do the rest of the series, but can't be proud of a basketball team. Can't. It's not possible. Cannot be proud of a team than what what we are of, of these Knicks. And that is the part that isn't surprising in the least because they've been doing it all season long. It's who they are. It's what they're about. It's what gets them out of bed in the morning. 